What so proudly we sailed. <laughs> if you've ever tried to sing the Star Spangled Banner, <clears throat> you see, you know it's not easy. Can't go that high. <laughs> the lowest note and the highest note are an octave and a half apart. That's 12 full notes. For comparison, God Save the Queen spans seven notes. Oh, Canada? It's nine. Yes, exactly, Estelle. This is why we need a new national anthem. What? No, just this is exactly why the national anthem is so great. No, 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 no. The French anthem, that's great. And it's got a range of nine notes. Nine notes is enough to make Yvonne cry in Casablanca. But 12 notes? Through, through. God. That just feels like failure. I know the words to it, but I'm so aware of how bad I sound. I'm like, I, I have to stop right now. <laughs> and it's not just the overall range. The whole song feels like it's trying to lose us, starting with the first line. So you go, oh, say, can you see? I've already traversed an octave from say to C. That's music theory expert Paula Telesco. But from C, I have to go up to by the. So now I've traversed a tenth, and we're only in the second measure. <laughs> and then right here, you're also hit with a chromatic note, which means it's not in the same key that the rest of the notes are in. And that comes right after this dive. An interval is the distance between two notes. If they're right next to each other, they're called steps. Most music moves by step, meaning a much smaller percentage of skips. But the Star Spangled Banner is full of skips, including fourths, fifths, sixths, a tenth. So, you know, it's kind of treacherous. That's why music teachers in the 30s opposed the law that officially made the Star Spangled Banner our national anthem. And a writer in the 1920s said that no one with a normal esophagus can sing it without screaming. And in 1906, the Washington Post called it perhaps the most unlovely tune that was ever rung from the quivering bowels of a horn. Are you done? Yes. I'm just saying... Shouldn't the national anthem be something we can all sing? <laughs> exactly. Okay, but how often do you really need to do that? I mean, consider the context where most Americans even hear this song. The Super Bowl, NBA Finals, the World Series. Why shouldn't the national anthem performance be just as challenging and anxiety-ridden as whatever sporting event it's commencing? What happens when you start too high? You're screwed. <laughs> You're totally screwed. That's Matt Farnsworth. He's a vocal coach and teacher in New York City. People think I should just start in a comfortable range, like, oh, say, that would be my comfortable range. But really, I need to start down here. Oh, say, otherwise, I'm going to be very, very high by the time I get to the end of the song. And the vowels in these lyrics make it even harder. For the land, open vowel, land of the. And then all of a sudden you have to go to a closed vowel, which is E. E and U are closed vowels. Free. So you've got to figure out how to sing the E vowel with an open throat, but close it on top. Talented singers pull this off by mixing their chest and head voice. So chest voice is like your Ethel Merman. Get my regards to Broadway, right? Head voice is when we think of like opera singers. If you're just using your chest voice at the land of the free, it'll sound like this. Land of the... And then you feel that free, it just feels like it's not gonna go. But if you incorporate your head voice just a little, it's like hitting a game-winning fadeaway jump shot. And notice how Jennifer Hudson went up even more on free. That's not just an octave and a half, that's two octaves. There's one person who did it so well that a recording of the song peaked at 20 on the Billboard Hot 100. If our anthem was easy to sing, Joss, we would not get these moments. Okay, I'm not saying that I don't have goosebumps, but let the record show that that microphone was not on. Wait, 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 wait. That was pre-recorded? 
You're killing my heart right now. Are you positive? But let's talk about the lyrics, which were written by a slaveholder. And in the third stanza, they celebrate the death of slaves who sided with the British in the War of 1812. But the song is about Fort McHenry in Baltimore, which withstood a 24-hour attack from the British Navy. So the big inspiring idea here is that the country still exists. Is it the ramparts yet? I keep going to the rampart. Oh, who's Bright Stripes? Perilous Night? Um. Brave. Whew. These words are more descriptive than motivating. They're also phrased really awkwardly, so it's no wonder that they just don't stick in our brains. Who's Bright Stripes and Bright Stars and the heavenly light? You know, I have a really good laugh about it, and you know, you get over things, and you know, you, you get back up again. Christina, you deserve better. No, 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 no. Hold up. America loves watching people publicly fail. And the rockets! Uh oh. <laughs> Written by Francis Scott off key. We should be grateful that the Star Spangled Banner gives us those moments. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know quite what it was that I was watching, but I think that's another example of, I think she really tried to do something new with it, and it just wasn't as successful as she hoped it would be. Yes, it's risky for performers to try something new, but when they do it well, it's amazing. Let's rewind back to 1968. It's Game 5 of the World Series, and Jose Feliciano, a 23-year-old blind Puerto Rican folk singer, is there to do the anthem. it's immediately apparent this doesn't sound like the Star Spangled Banner. It's the height of the Vietnam War, and our national anthem sounds like a peaceful folk tune. He finishes it, and then listen closely. There are boos. One woman was so angry, she said she was going to write a letter to her senator to complain. But RCA released the live recording as a single. And it was the first time the national anthem made it on the Billboard charts. Fifteen years later, Marvin Gaye walked up to center court at the 1983 NBA All-Star Game with a shocking amount of swagger and took a cue from Feliciano. By the end, the crowd was clapping with him. We don't need a different national anthem to feel something. We just need the right singer. Like maybe these singers? So you want one of those to be our national anthem? To be honest, they're a little religious for my taste. See, people have tried in vain to replace the Star Spangled Banner for a really long time. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. So just enjoy it when it's good, and enjoy it when it's bad too. Who's bright stripes and bright stars?